the parts of our brain which make us angry or mistrusting or afraid or irritated don't always connect to the parts of the brain where we actually rationalize things in spoken form. This idea, effectively, where Rose approached me and uh, she was the initial enthusiast, the instigator of the whole thing, and then managed uh, very successfully uh, to whip up enthusiasm both from me, who immediately saw this was something different, new, and uh, emphatically worth supporting. He can plot everything. He's inspiring. Every single person in the audience has effectively co-funded my trip here. They've actually wanted me to come, so the obligation on me to deliver is just a little bit higher as well. Of our brain which make us angry or mistrusting or afraid or irritated don't always connect to the parts of the brain where we actually rationalize things in spoken form. The security lane at airports. Now everybody seems to share this really weird thing where they really hate going through airport security. And when people are asked to take their laptop out of the bag, they practically go apoplectic. We like to think that our conscious, rationalizing brain is the Oval Office. In most cases, it's actually the press office. It's not actually making the decisions. It's hastily constructing a rational, plausible-sounding case for decisions or emotions we've already experienced elsewhere in our brains. What we also seem to have is an extraordinarily advanced and sophisticated mental apparatus for deciding who to trust. We like to buy from people we can hurt, okay? And if that's through reputation, that's fine. This actually shows that a sense of fairness and equity actually predates humankind, that higher primates actually also feel the same thing. And this has massive implications for policy and politics and everything else. So she gives a rock to us, that's the task, and we give her a piece of cucumber and she eats it. The other one needs to give a rock to us, and that's what she does. And she gets a grape, and she eats it. The other one sees that. She gives a rock to us now, gets again cucumber. But thank you very much once again for all inviting me. Thank you. If I had to describe tonight in one sentence, I'd just say it was one of the most rewarding and challenging speaking engagements I've ever had in sort of six or seven years of doing much of this kind of thing. I think it was really inspirational. Nice networking event. Awesome. Inspiring. If you want to see somebody live, if you just club together and uh, find other people who want it, it can happen. So I'm intensely proud to be the first person to speak at this event because I think this is actually a big idea that's going to grow and grow and grow and spread. Let's